Well, hello everyone. Welcome to a bonus episode of Decadent. And uh, we are filming this just around the Thanksgiving season. I'll probably get this out on Thanksgiving proper. Nice. So we're here to discuss, uh, you know, a seasonal bird that we're kind of a big fan of. And I don't Absolutely. mean turkey. I mean the <laughs> penguin. The penguin. <laughs> Absolutely. So I watched it as it aired week to week, and you recently just finished uh, binging it. Yes, I did. Um, there's not, I don't think there's like a whole lot of reason to avoid spoilers as it's been out for a while. So we're going to jump right into spoilers at our whim. So you've been warned if you haven't seen it. And if you haven't seen it, Go watch it. Go watch it. It's well worth the watch. It really is. It's, it was very enjoyable, and it's very binge-worthy. That's what I thought about it. I mean, they did set it up during the week-to-week, -week, though. Yeah. I, I mean, it is a hook. They hook at the end of each episode. There's a hook that wants you to come back to watch the next episode because oh, yeah, you're like, all right, where's this going now? So, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, I had a really good time with it, too. Um, in terms of, like, talking points, I mean, Colin Farrell was great. I had a hard time believing it was Colin Farrell. I know. you got to constantly remind yourself. Yeah, it's like, really? He's underneath that, you yeah. know? But he was really good. The dialogue, I would say the dialogue for all the characters was, like, spot on. Yeah. I mean, it, it was a dialogue-driven gangster kind yes. of plot. And, I mean, I guess they could have got. I was thinking about that earlier when you said we were going to talk about it. Is like they could have done that as a mini series with just about any kind of gangster kind of related thing. They could have. I think just having it in the Batman, um, Penguin, as it were, yeah. uh, uh, setting, it, it worked. You know, it, and it did. And yeah. it, it, it's kind of an interesting thing. All right, how does Penguin get to be the henchman now, or get to go get through to the it, top? The top, you know. Yeah, and they do kind of put him on like your traditional like hero's journey where like, you know, he has like adversaries and rising and falling actions, but he's still the bad guy and he's still going for bad things. Like, oh, yeah, know, absolutely. You get upset when like you're like, oh no, his drug deal has gone sideways. Yes. How are we going to fix, fix it? This. You know, it's like, how's he going to yeah, get yeah. it? Yeah, but you're like, you're rooting for, for a bad, bad man. Guy. Yeah, like a killer and a but psychopath. He, he was, he truly was, but at the same time, he, for him, it was about being on top, but it was all about respect and him wanting to leave a legacy. Yes, it was. I mean, because he kept talking about Rex, the yep. gangster when he was They threw a parade a kid. for him. He threw a parade for him. He had, the, he had the gold Cadillac, you know? And here the penguin, you know, he's got the plum cars, which <laughs> yep. I thought was awesome. I thought it was pretty cool. That was, you know, you know who drives around in a plum Maserati, you know? That, that's kind of wild. But, Guy uh, wants to be noticed. I want you to recognize him when he's driving down the street. But there was a there was a lot of thought given to the content of how he was going to go about doing it. There was, I mean, if you like character driven kind of shows, this is one for you because right. every character in it, you know, you you got to see a little bit about them. They didn't spend too much time on the big bosses, but they let you know. No, it was kind of about the next generation. Kind of next generation coming up. Like, so. Yeah, uh, Falcone obviously having died in the Batman mm -hmm. gets only one flashback scene where they recast the actor as Mark Strong, but it was worth yes. it. Yes. It was totally worth it yep. when he just stares down his daughter. That yep. was super good. Like, she's like, oh, there must oh, be a reason. There must be a reason. Or... Yeah, they really did a good job with Sophia. Um, she's like a very likable kind of like, not, well, I mean, they're all villains, but yeah. she's like the opposing force to Cobb, to like Oswald. Yeah. And absolutely. like, absolutely. Just they, they're moving, for, for a brief period of time, they move in the same direction. And then they are opposing forces for most of the show. Oh, absolutely. And then she goes, I, I can't believe I trusted him. Oh, you yeah. Know, that kind of stuff. He's so, so manipulative. He's just trust, you know, trust me and all this, but. Uh. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful show. Uh, so I was thinking, because one of the, the things that's been going around online is um, it would seem quite improbable that Batman wouldn't show up at any point. Like, with all this stuff happening in Gotham, how do you justify not having Batman in it at all? Uh, I didn't think it was too big a deal for most of the show. He could have been pretty busy with that. The whole fallout of when they blew up the, you know, blowing up the, the seawall. Yeah. I mean, which they recover could, in the show, I think and I thought they, 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 they yeah. cover it better in the show than in the movie. Yeah, and I, you know, you can say he was busy doing other things at that time, I guess, you know, but. I think when Sophia blows up an underground metro street oh, station, gonna be there. Batman would. But, I, but it was during the daylight. It was too, during so. the day, and th I think the rest of the episode kind of takes place throughout the rest of that day too. Yes. The next, the next uh, episode after that. So, I can kind of forgive it. Uh, I think it would have been nice to get maybe a small cameo. I, instead, we get, 
you know, we get the uh, the bat signal. I like that at the end. It was fine. It was a nice I little touch well, to remind you it's tied I together. Mean, it was, especially how the dialogue went, where they, you know, as oh, yeah. you get to that that final scene where he's in there and trying to, you know, get his mother's <laughs> approval yet. Oh yeah. And, I mean, it was just brutal. Yeah. The, the the whole last episode was just a wow. It was like you got to be kidding me kind of show to me. I was yeah. like, oh, this is not good. It's kind of like a hollow victory for him yeah. in a lot of ways. You know, but I mean, the, the scene with his mom sitting there staring out in the penthouse and then the tear comes down because he had promised her earlier that he was going to take her out before she became a vegetable. I, I think that tear oh. was just her disgust and disappointment and a little bit of fear of Oz. And when he sees it, he's like, right, it's a beautiful oh, it's view. Gratitude. It's a, he oh, thinks it's he gratitude. Thinks it's no, gratitude. She's, she's yeah. crying because he didn't yeah. do what she asked him to do, which was kill her. Mm. He, he asked. You're right. And he, she makes him she, promise and he doesn't do it. He's right. And he didn't do it. So once again, yeah. she was disappointed in him. Broke his broke his word. Broke his again. word again. Yeah. That's all so. he does in that show is yep. make But thanks to some lazy editing. You won't even notice. Promises and then back up. Oh yeah. Him. He does. <clears throat> he, he he tells anybody everything they want to hear mm -hmm. and the whole time he's like, oh, I'm gonna be doing I'm this. Be doing my own thing. So yeah, I liked it. I, I really did. Oh, I did too. Uh, and of course you, you can't talk about the penguin without talking about his right hand man, Vic. Vic was awesome. Vic was very good. There were so many scenes in the show of just Penguin and Vic, and they knew what they were doing. Yeah. Like when they're at the restaurant and he's trying to order the steak frites, and yep. he can't quite say it because of his lisp, and yep. the waiter goes, the steak frites, and Penguin's like, don't you finish for him, don't you do that. And I'm like, whoa. And then he says, you need to do that. Yeah. So he sets up, the whole thing is he's mentoring him and he's taking him underneath his wing, saying this is what I hate. And his whole mantra throughout the whole thing to everybody is, hey, we're the working guys. We're the working guys, we're the working yes, guys. we're the working guys. We're the working guys, we're doing all the work, they're taking all the benefits, yep. it's, our, it's our turn. And if we want it, we have to take it because it's never gonna be given to us. Vic takes that uh, even a step further to heart when he's like, it's not the captains we need to impress, it's the lieutenants. Yes. They're the real shot callers. Yes. So like- And I was, you know, and I was wondering too, is it, in that end scene there, when he said, hey, you know, I think of you now as family. And I wonder if that was the trigger point for Penguin. I don't think so. I or think, you think he was always all, he intended. always intended on not yep. doing I, I, that. I 100% believe that once Oz got to power, he would burn. He would burn Vic. He would kill Vic. Have him. I'm I thought he would so... have him killed. I didn't think he'd do it himself. Yeah. And in such like a gut wrenching way. But I mean, he still kept. He still kept his cool girlfriend around though. And she, yeah, but that's but different. That's she, like a that's, whole that's psychosexual. A whole cycle, yeah. yeah. And it remember, because he makes her role play as yeah. the mom, it's all Oedipal and stuff yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, and absolutely. So like, that's a different thing. But like for, for Vic, it's like, you you know. He's got to be on his own. You know He's got to be one. Yeah, yeah. you know, you, oh, you he know too much. He knows too much. You know yeah, too much. Absolutely. Yeah, like, when but he started I, saying, it, you're watching my mom, I was like, well, that's a kiss of death. Yeah. Because he had told everybody else the mom was dead. So you can't have a guy running around knowing about Oz's mom the whole time. Because like he said, family, makes you weak. And so he had to do something about it. And he's not, he's not going to turn on his mom because he's, well, he's no, insane, no, he's about, insane about, it. about that. So, That's, you know, you take yeah. Vic out, nobody knows you have a mom anymore, except, you know, the, the prostitute. But then again, that's a transactional thing. And, yes. Um, but yeah. That's true. That's very true. Very so, and true. I mean, and there's nothing saying that he wouldn't have her killed if he thought it was going too far. She knew too I much always like, I thought I just thought about it too, you know, in the back of his head too. He goes, oh, look at this. This kid turned all the lieutenants. Yeah, right. And he yeah, goes, he and, be he's, for me. and he's my lieutenant. He's going to be coming for me next. You know that kind of thing. But yeah, Vic was. Too, I don't think too... Vic would have done that. I mean, it's like you said, you're you're too good of a man. Vic. Yeah, he 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 was a loyal guy. Like that that one episode where he's not sure if he wants to stay with me because even Vic knows. Yeah, I can't get away from this guy. The only way out is if he kills me. Yes. And so he has that whole freak out in that one episode. Oh, yeah. And Penguin's like, all this, all this, and this is what you feel. And he puts yeah. the gun to oh, his head. Gosh, and, yes. and he's like, go, go. And then, of course, you know, Vic comes back. And the Same timing of that was awesome, too, because that was right after Penguin and, like, um, Sophia had kind of, like, not quite like mended, but they were kind of like more on the same oh, page. Oh, they were on the same page. And then page he gets in the car going, and he's like, what about Sophie? And he's like, leave her, drive. Well, that's because, <laughs> that's because the Maroney showed up yeah. and then she, she tells him, or she, the the wife tells her, oh, he didn't tell you that he took out your brother? Yeah, that's right. And she goes, I thought, I thought you knew, I thought you I had thought him you take knew. out your brother because you wanted to take control. Oh, he didn't tell you that. You know, and the the actress that plays her, she's been in so many other shows that I've seen. She's she's so good. 
Yeah, well, uh, she's in from the Expanse. From like, the Expanse, and she played, yeah. yeah. No. So she was good, and then it was Clancy Brown who played I like Sal. Clancy. Yeah, Clancy he didn't get Brown. nearly enough screen time. No, but the ti- the the stuff he did was, I mean, I, I, I was it, little... it, it would hurt having Clancy Brown take a golf club to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sure would, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, I, I thought of that. I was like, oh, that's got to hurt. There's another great oh, sequence where hurt. he's fighting Oz and he just has like the heart attack. Yes. And Oz is like, you're supposed to beat me. What's going on? And he just angrily starts shooting him and then just keeps shooting him. Like, yeah, like he no. wanted to make sure he took him out for, for his crew out there. He goes, yeah, I took him out. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can not, hear him he's, yelling. He's yeah. not good. He's it's not performative good. a little yeah, too. Yeah, you're right. He's not going to let him know that the guy died of a heart attack. He goes, no, I took him out. I win. Yeah, I win. I, win. I beat you. Know? Him. Yeah, you were but, supposed to beat me. But yeah, that was that was something. So uh, another thing to talk about is this Batman universe is essentially dead now. Um, they're going to do the Batman 2. I'm not sure they started filming it. Yeah. But like James Gunn now taking over DC, he's got kind of, he's kind of painted himself in a corner here because not only was the Batman fairly well regarded. I mean, I didn't really like the ending, but there are parts of it I liked. I liked yeah. the adaptation of like Long Halloween. Um, I really liked Penguin. Yeah. And I'm, it kind of shows you like what you could do with like with Batman and I've heard some ideas float around it's like so they're gonna do Batman 2 and then James Gunn's gonna have to do his own Batman but why can't you separate it and just keep this universe as kind of like a TV show you could do this show with Batman oh yeah you could you could have half oh, yeah. about like Penguin half about Victor Freeze half oh, about yeah. anyone and the other half about Batman like yeah. keeping tabs well, they, on they, or... they already introduced in there they bat uh, uh Catwoman because the, at yeah, the very the end, she brings the letter in, and this is your half sister. Yeah, Selena. Selena Kyle. Kyle. You know, and I was like, okay, you know, and they did, and like it said at the end, you know, who's going to stop? You, nobody could stop you now. Who's going to stop you now? Who's going to get in your way? And then they fade off to the bat signal. The bat go, signal. Of course, Batman's going to yeah. be there, but it'll be curious to see how they continue it in Batman too, because this is like the show of the, like everybody is like talking about it. Everybody likes, likes it. it. Whether, whether you're familiar with Batman or not, I mean, you don't have to be that familiar. There's certainly nice nods to like comics and stuff in oh, it, yeah. but it really is just a very accessible, like you said, character driven show where you got to pay attention to the things they say to each other. Very dialogue driven. Yeah. I mean, even, even in the, the, brutal violence that takes place in that yeah there's still dialogue going oh, yeah. on these guys are talking to one another while they're beating each other up <laughs> yeah. and they're doing all this other stuff but mostly odds pleading mostly <laughs> odds pleading right true but i uh, i just thought it was kind of a talky tv show and i did not mind that nope. and then there were some things where you kind of like cringe you go like oh my god really but it just some parts were pretty violent you know yeah. but but it they're not good people. No. And it's like you said, you're kind of rooting for him to pull it off. You you're know, it's rooting like, for him I to pull him. it off. Oh, how's he going to yeah, do I that? want him to win, ah, but it's like him winning is a ah, bad thing. All the mushrooms are gone. Ah, now uh, what are you going to do, dude? <laughs> yeah, I, oh yeah, right? After, dude, that scene where he burns um, the the kid and the wife of Sal, when he burns them that and was, it just that was one of the, That was on one of the face. cringy graphic things And he's me, just watching smiling. It. Yeah, he just watches them He's just them smiling as they burn. And I'm but like, whoa. But then when he's, talk, when he's <laughs> talking to awesome. Sal as he's going through it, and you know, well, he's to get him upset, and he goes, you know, you say I'm cooked. Yeah. And oh, I yeah, said, he, oh, here we go. And then he goes, I wasn't prepared for the smell I wasn't of burning hair. And I was like, oh, God, Oz, ah, just stop. Oh, no, no, he can't it, help no, it, though. No, and then the way it went. But, yeah. It was awesome. It was a really so they good did, I mean, the, 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 the other gangland guys getting them all together. I thought his, the, the writing of his speech when he's on the pickup truck. Oh, the, the beer, beer summit? The beer summit. That was pretty good. I mean, I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. And they're all sitting there, and then it, at the end you hear, <laughs> Yeah, simple stuff. And I go, I mean, it doesn't get any better yeah, than that. You, you set it up. Yeah. Hear all the characters, you pay them off. Yeah. And they just and have they a very simple moment because you know the significance of it because the show's done a very good job of establishing stakes. Yep. And even Link, you know, when they were going mm-hmm. in, when they were rushing down to mm-hmm. try to save him and then realize everything was blowed up. And yeah. Then, and, uh, yeah, you Victor can see start, Link Victor, kind of... Victor's yelling at him, you guys are all a bunch of chickens. And, <laughs> and he punches him and says, you better watch your tone because you'll catch a bullet doing that. He goes, I, I kind of agree with you. Right. He goes, but you need to stop. Mm-hmm. And then they all go away. And then later on, he figures it out. Yeah. I mean, that was a pretty good scene too. And Sophia yeah. brings them all to the house. He goes, you can have this. Mm-hmm. 
And then oh, she yeah. torches and then she, it. And then, yeah. she torches the whole thing. I like when she shot Johnny Vitti in front of everybody. That yes. was pretty good because that guy was a major liability for them. You oh, know? absolutely. Like, yeah, her gassing the uh, the whole family. I thought I thought that was probably a little over the top. Um, a little bit but, of a stretch. Yeah, but it was still okay. It you know, it's yeah, like I, I didn't, I you, didn't want, you want of, something bombastic. It's a comic book show. You that's know? true. I, I didn't get the the niece saying, "Oh, I saw a mask in your bag, though." I mean, yeah, it's like why? Mm, that was a little weak. But I think she did that to see that she like she did not want to see her niece be broken like she was. Like she broken. was. Yeah, that's she did that's the parallel between the, the two of them. them you, know? you know, it's but, generational I mean, trauma. Uh, that we didn't need Dr. Julian Rush. He served no, nope, purpose. no purpose. I have no. I guess the showrunners were saying, yeah, we put in like a couple red herrings to make you think he could be like a prototype scare, like scarecrow type. And I was yeah, like, I he, re he reads more like Hugo Strange to me personally. Yes, yeah. Like that whole kind of like mm -hmm. the mind tripping and whatnot, but like using you know actual techniques. So I don't know. We we could have done without him. And it's. I mean, maybe he'll have a role in the Batman Two, but I don't know how much the movie's going to want to go to this. Well, well, he went back to Arkham. So yeah, he had left Arkham, now he's back at I'm not Arkham. sure, yeah, they, they imply he left Arkham, but I'm not sure he ever actually did. I think he just signed up with Sophia quietly. Yeah. Because so, he said, well, no, he was kinda, she said, I, she goes, I re, he goes, I resigned. Did he? Yeah, I he did say oh, that. Man. He did say he resigned because she said you left. Okay. Then he goes, well, I couldn't sit there and watch all the stuff all that right. was going on. And then he was doing his own thing with the lights and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah, yeah. I, Every time I saw him, all I could think of was when he was playing in Sons of Anarchy, you know? Yeah, I know. It's tough for, like, what's that guy, like, Theo Rossi, I think yeah, is his Theo name? Rossi, it's tough yeah. because, like, when I, whenever I see him in anything, that's what I think. Yeah. It's like, do you remember the guy who played Tony Almeida in 24? Yes. Like, whenever I see him in something, I just yes. like, that's Tony Almeida. Like, you <laughs> yeah. know, that's all I can think. Some actors are just, yeah, unfortunately, no matter who, what they play, that's who they that's are. That's who it is. Because, uh, what was he just in? He was just in a show I watched. Oh, he was in Lincoln Lawyer. That's there what it go. was, yeah. And I was like, that's just Tony Almeida. No, I, uh, I really enjoyed, really enjoyed The Penguin. I really don't have a whole lot more to say on it, to be honest. When a show's no. like really good, it's kind of easy for me to just yeah. like point out the few details I like. Yep. Um, I highly recommend watching it. I mean, I know new shows and new stuff. We, we've kind of been struggling to find something that's really gripped our attention that hasn't been just kind of like cheese. Right. You know? Yeah. So it, it was kind of nice to... Uh, Especially coming off, like for me personally, coming off like House of the Dragon season two, yeah. which I liked a lot. But the last episode, I'm like, no, come on. This is <laughs> really, I got to wait on this. Yeah. And so then it's like, you know, you're a little curious, like, oh, maybe I'll check out Penguin. And uh, that first episode had me hooked. I was really, really enjoying it. I don't think, though, Penguin is going to lead me into Dune Prophecy as much as they were hoping. Mm. But hey, you never know. HBO's, uh, you never know. Yeah, I watched it. I watched it in two settings. I yeah. was able to do it in two settings. I mean, you did the is what eight episodes. You did the first four, and then I did the back four. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a good it, breakdown and of it, it. And it and it worked really well. But I, I mean, had I, well, in all fairness, had I started it early in the morning, I probably would have just watched the whole thing through because it's like kind of a nice long yeah, movie, is. which was re which was really good. Because like I said, they they hook you at the end of each episode. You want to see what's going to happen next. You really do. You know, and if you can't have time, well, you watch what happened a little bit, and then you can shut it off and start it again <laughs> yeah, later. start it but, again later. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, no, really, really good show. Uh, I, I hope they, the writers and the showrunners and stuff like that can get together and do something more like that again you know yeah. it was actually good and it could explore other other dc you characters could just bring like in you gotham could, you can just, yeah, just remember gotham. remember the show gotham yes i remember do. It? penguin yes. feels more like what i wanted from gotham than gotham gotham was a little too like like early agents of shield yes. where it was like very popcorny and light and kind yeah. of cheap yeah. and cheesy and i didn't really get on board with it some of gotham i thought had interesting ideas and much like agents of shield when they started breaking their seasons into smaller arcs yes. but I really wanted like Gotham to be more like an FX show and Penguin, you know, is HBO. So that's even a step further than what I could expect from like FX in terms of like world building and violence. Right. So, I mean, HBO just knows how to make good TV. They've been doing it for forever. Yeah, they have been doing it for so a long time. So I, I absolutely agree with you. I think this could be, I mean, if they're smart and well, they may not be smart, but they've got to be greedy, right? Yeah, I would hope. So I, I, would hope. I, would, I agree. I think they should not break the band up completely. Yeah. Um, let Batman 2 happen. And then if you can, after Batman 2, maybe even like a follow-up season to Batman. But like I said, 
you don't even need like Robert Pattinson as Batman in a TV show. Just get some guy in the suit. The yeah, suit's more yeah. impressive than the man. Yeah, it you know, it, it's all about the suit. Make a Batman TV. <laughs> make a Batman TV show. A live action Batman TV show. Yeah, you have a winning formula in Penguin. Now just instead hey, of they the, did it in the sixties. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, they're like instead of the other half of it being Sophia, right? You can just make the other half of it Batman. So you oh, can yeah. do Batman and like select villain arcs. Yeah, and, absolutely. Like, I don't know. Pretty great, but yeah, that's uh, that's kind of my final thoughts on Penguin. Yeah. Uh, so the other thing we like to do on Decadent is we like to discuss what we're smoking and what we're drinking. And in this case, I'll start us off. I'm having an HC. Do you know what these stand for, HC? Uh, no, I don't. I don't either. I gave one to Plumber, and he's like, HC? And I'm like, I don't know. They're just pretty good. So I'm having an HC White with, of course, my personal favorite, Miller High Life. It's pretty good. I, I'm having the same same smoke. We're, uh, the HC White, it's a very light uh Light cigar. It's got uh, it's got an easy draw, and it's got some big smoke for being as light as it is. Which Absolutely, I, which I, I really it. like. And I I paired that with well, it's it's light, and I have a Miller light. You know, yeah, we're a Miller going, family go, these go, days. Going, going the domestic here, but <laughs> but yeah, it's a wonderful it's pairing. Very good. So yeah, taking uh, advantage of the kind of a nice day we got here. Yet we're not going to have many opportunities you know, for decadent coming not up. Not on a deck. No. It, I'll have to find a way to muffle some of the sound in the garage if we're going to do it in the winter. <laughs> Put a noise canceling on <laughs> yeah, the... Yeah, just got to find a way to make sure that... Noise yeah. canceling on the furnace. <laughs> yeah, right. Just, yeah, it's never going to happen. No. Uh, that thing's so loud. I mean, this picks up the wind, so... Yes, it does. But anyways, uh, that's all we got for this episode right. of Decadent. Awesome. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, and uh, let's that's hope true. that Miami... Beats the Packers. No, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we are going to have a fun time watching. We sure are. There you go. All right, everybody. All right. Thanks for watching. Until right. next time.